Ibrahim Traore's military is a terrorist's worst nightmare. In 2022, Burkina Faso was a country grappling with a dire security crisis, where terrorists held sway over entire cities. The nation's struggle reached a critical point on September 26, when a convoy of 207 vehicles traveling from the capital to Jibo was ambushed by Al-Qaeda terrorists. The attack resulted in 37 deaths, and 70 truck drivers went missing. This incident starkly highlighted the weakness of Burkina Faso's security forces, leaving the nation in shock and prompting widespread anger and fear among its people. The attack underscored the extent of terrorist control and the urgent need for a drastic change in the country's approach to combating extremism. In response to the growing unrest, a significant shift in Burkina Faso's leadership occurred just days later. On September 30, 2022, as the country was still reeling from the devastating attack, a group of military officers, led by Captain Ibrahim Traoré, staged a coup. This bold move was aimed at reshaping the nation's security strategy. The operation was meticulously planned, beginning with Traoré's faction taking control of the state television station, which allowed them to manage the flow of information. From there, the coup plotters swiftly seized key military bases across the capital, disarming forces loyal to the existing leader, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandalgo Damiba, and gaining control of crucial armories and communication centers. The coup extended beyond military installations, with Traoré's forces also taking over important government buildings, including the Ministry of Defense and the Prime Minister's office, with minimal resistance. The element of surprise played a crucial role in their success, catching many off guard. The final and most symbolic target was the presidential palace, which was infiltrated by Traoré's forces with the help of intelligence from sympathetic insiders. With the capture of the palace, the coup was complete, marking the beginning of a new chapter in Burkina Faso's history. Captain Ibrahim Traoré wasted no time in addressing the nation. He criticized the previous leader's decisions, stating that Lieutenant Colonel Damiba's leadership had progressively weakened the country's security. Traoré declared that the removal of Damiba was necessary to restore security and safeguard the integrity of the homeland. His words resonated with many Burkina Bay, who had grown increasingly frustrated with the ongoing security crisis. Traoré promised to rebuild the military, addressing critical shortages in weapons and equipment that had hampered previous efforts to combat terrorism. The public reaction to the coup was mixed, but largely positive. Many citizens saw the change in leadership as a necessary step to address the dire security situation. The successful break of the jihadist blockade of Jibo, a city that had been under siege for a long time, was one of the new administration's first major operations. This mission not only provided much-needed supplies to the besieged city, but also served as a powerful symbol of the new government's commitment to action. The success of this operation significantly boosted national morale, giving people hope that real change was possible. For the first time in a long while, many Burkina Bay felt that their country might be turning a corner in its fight against terrorism. While the fight was far from over, Captain Ibrahim Traoré's decisive actions marked the beginning of a new era, filled with renewed determination and hope for a more secure future for Burkina Faso. In Burkina Faso's time of dire need, China emerged as a crucial ally when Captain Ibrahim Traoré's administration sought assistance. China's response was swift and decisive, underscoring the seriousness of the security crisis in Burkina Faso. They promptly agreed to send multiple shipments of weapons and military supplies to bolster Burkina Faso's efforts against terrorist groups that had entrenched themselves in parts of the country. The speed and scale of China's support demonstrated the gravity of the situation and the urgent need for external assistance to restore security and stability. The first deliveries from China included a substantial arsenal of modern weapons, which significantly enhanced the capabilities of Burkina Faso's military. The shipments contained new rifles, machine guns, and ample ammunition, among other critical military equipment. As soon as these supplies arrived, the military leadership in Burkina Faso wasted no time in distributing them to the front lines, where soldiers were engaged in intense battles with extremist groups. This rapid deployment of new arms provided a much-needed boost to the fighting strength of the Burkina Bay forces, who had previously been outgunned by the terrorists they were up against. Before the arrival of these shipments,
Burkina Faso soldiers often faced a daunting challenge in the form of well-armed terrorist groups. The extremists, possessing superior weaponry, had been able to overpower the military, making it difficult for the government to protect its citizens and reclaim territories under terrorist control. However, with the influx of modern weapons from China, the situation began to change. The new rifles and machine guns leveled the playing field, enabling Burkina Faso soldiers to engage the terrorists more effectively and with greater confidence. One of the most significant impacts of this new equipment was evident in the efforts to break the terrorist blockade of Jibo, a city that had been under siege for an extended period. The blockade had left the residents of Jibo isolated and deprived of essential supplies. However, with their newly acquired weapons, Burkina Faso's military was able to fight through the terrorist lines and bring much-needed relief to the besieged city. This successful mission was not only a logistical victory, but also a powerful morale booster for the entire nation. It demonstrated to the people of Burkina Faso that their military was becoming stronger and more capable of reclaiming control from extremist forces. The quick delivery of these weapons also highlighted the effectiveness of Burkina Faso's new leadership in securing international support. Captain Traoré and his team's ability to swiftly obtain crucial military aid from China was a testament to their commitment to addressing the country's security challenges head-on. For many Burkina Bay, seeing their soldiers equipped with modern powerful weapons was a significant morale booster. It instilled a renewed sense of pride and hope, signaling that the country was finally mounting a serious defense against the terrorists who had caused so much fear and devastation. However, the acquisition of new weapons was just the beginning. Burkina Faso's military leaders recognized that to truly make a difference, these tools needed to be used strategically and effectively. They began planning new operations, leveraging their improved firepower to launch more aggressive and coordinated attacks against terrorist strongholds. The first major test of these efforts came on October 21, 2022, when a large military convoy set out from the capital with the mission of breaking the siege on Jibo. This mission was about more than just delivering supplies. It was a statement that Burkina Faso was reclaiming its sovereignty and fighting back against those who sought to destabilize the country. The journey to Jibo was fraught with danger as terrorist attacks on convoys had become a common occurrence along this route. But this time, the soldiers were better prepared, armed with new weapons and a renewed sense of purpose. As they approached Jibo, the tension was palpable, but the soldiers remained vigilant, ready to confront any threats. When the convoy finally reached the city, the sight that greeted them was both heartbreaking and hopeful. Thousands of residents, weary from months of shortages, lined the streets, their expressions a mix of exhaustion and relief. The arrival of the convoy signified not just the delivery of vital supplies, but also the rekindling of hope in a city that had been cut off from the world for far too long. The supplies carried by the convoy, including grains, cooking oil, and special food for malnourished children, were desperately needed by the residents of Jibo. As the trucks were unloaded, soldiers took up defensive positions around the city to ensure the safety of the residents and the continued flow of aid. This operation, made possible by the new weapons from China, was a turning point in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism. It marked the beginning of a more assertive and effective campaign to restore security and rebuild the nation. The successful mission to deliver food and supplies to Jibo was not merely a logistical achievement. It was a significant victory for Burkina Faso's new leadership. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's administration had pledged to make the country safer, and this mission was a clear demonstration of their commitment and capability. The successful delivery of aid to Jibo, a city long besieged by terrorist groups, was a powerful symbol that Burkina Faso was not only determined to fight back, but also capable of executing complex and dangerous operations. News of the convoy's success spread rapidly throughout the nation, sparking celebrations in the capital and other regions. Government officials hailed it as a crucial step in the ongoing battle against terrorism. And for the people of Jibo, the arrival of the convoy meant more than just access to food. It was a lifeline and a reminder that they had not been forgotten by their government. The mission also sent a strong message to the terrorist groups that had plagued the country. Burkina Faso's military was growing stronger and more confident, and they were not afraid to confront the extremists head on. Despite the convoy's success, the battle for Jibo was far from over. 
Although the military had managed to break through the terrorist blockade, the city remained surrounded by hostile forces. The soldiers who accompanied the convoy stayed behind to defend Jibo, aware that maintaining the city's safety and keeping it connected to the rest of the country would require ongoing vigilance and effort. This mission significantly boosted the morale of people across Burkina Faso. The public began to see that their new leaders were serious about reclaiming their country from terrorist control. The success in Jibo showed that with proper planning, coordination, and equipment, the Burkina Bay military could achieve critical victories. As word of the successful operation spread, more citizens began to believe that there was a real possibility for positive change in the country. The government capitalized on this surge in public confidence, using it as a springboard to plan further operations against terrorist groups. They understood that the victory in Jibo was just the beginning, and that much work remained to secure the entire nation. The battle for Jibo marked a new chapter in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism. With the acquisition of modern weapons, determined soldiers, and a government committed to decisive action, the country started pushing back more effectively against the extremist groups that had caused so much fear and destruction. For the first time in a long while, many Burkina Bay felt that peace and security were within reach. The military's success in Jibo was a significant step forward, but they knew that to sustain this momentum, they needed to continue innovating in their fight against terrorism. The introduction of advanced drones, including the Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2 and the Akinci, provided a new technological edge. These drones allowed the military to monitor vast areas, detect threats from a distance, and strike targets with precision, all while minimizing the risk to civilian lives. The drones not only enhanced the military's operational capabilities, but also boosted the confidence of the soldiers on the ground, knowing they had high-tech support from the skies. This new phase in Burkina Faso's counterterrorism strategy, exemplified by the success in Jibo and the adoption of cutting-edge technology, showed that the country was serious about restoring peace and protecting its citizens. The combination of advanced drone technology and dedicated ground forces has proven to be a highly effective strategy for Burkina Faso's military in combating terrorist threats. This collaborative approach between the aerial surveillance capabilities of drones and the relentless pursuit of soldiers on the ground has significantly weakened the terrorist networks operating within the country. Following the terrorist attack on Manila on June 1, 2024, the military's response showcased just how integral these drones have become in maintaining national security. As the attack on Manila unfolded, the military quickly deployed one of its most advanced drones, the Akinci. This drone, equipped with long flight endurance and high-resolution imaging capabilities, was able to provide real-time intelligence to the soldiers on the ground. The terrorists, who initially believed they had the upper hand, were caught off guard by the swift and precise actions of the military. The Akinci drone tracked the attackers, even as they attempted to escape towards the Serba River, and relayed critical information to the ground forces, allowing them to respond effectively. The drones were not just eyes in the sky. They played a pivotal role in guiding the soldiers to strategic positions and identifying potential threats. The terrorists, desperate to escape, tried to use motorcycles and boats to flee, but the drone's persistent surveillance ensured that they were constantly monitored, even under the cover of darkness. The Akinci's night vision capabilities allowed it to continue tracking the terrorists until dawn, when the military launched a coordinated assault involving both ground forces and additional aerial support. The arrival of helicopters and special forces, including commandos, further intensified the pressure on the remaining terrorists. The operation was a resounding success, with the military not only repelling the attack, but also capturing or neutralizing many of the attackers. The commander of the operation praised the seamless coordination between the aerial and ground units, highlighting how this synergy had transformed Burkina Faso's military capabilities. The operation in Manila was a stark contrast to earlier struggles faced by the country in defending against such threats. Previously, Burkina Faso's military had often been outmatched by the well-coordinated and heavily armed terrorist groups operating in the region. However, with the introduction of drones like the Akinci and Bayraktar TB2, the military has gained a significant technological edge. These drones have become a crucial part of the country's defense strategy, flying daily missions to monitor potential threats and provide critical intelligence. 
The constant aerial surveillance has made it increasingly difficult for terrorist groups to operate, as they are always at risk of being detected and targeted. The successful use of drones in the Manila operation underscored their importance in modern warfare, particularly in regions where traditional ground operations are challenging due to terrain or the dispersed nature of the enemy. The drones not only help in detecting and engaging threats, but also minimize the risks to soldiers by providing them with accurate and timely information. This reduces the likelihood of ambushes and allows the military to conduct more precise and effective operations. The impact of this new strategy has been profound. The people of Burkina Faso have started to feel a renewed sense of security as the military continues to reclaim territories that were once under the control of terrorist groups. The success in Manila was not just a tactical victory, it was a significant psychological boost for the nation. It demonstrated that the military, with its new technology and improved tactics, could effectively protect its citizens and challenge the once dominant terrorist forces. In the aftermath of the Manila attack, the military intensified its operations, particularly in border regions where terrorist activities had been most prevalent. Elite units, such as the 41st and 42nd Regiments of Commandos and the 9th Rapid Intervention Battalion, led these efforts, supported by the continued use of drones for surveillance and reconnaissance. These operations have not only pushed back the terrorists, but also disrupted their logistics capturing weapons and communication equipment that are vital for their operations. The continued use of drones has made it increasingly difficult for terrorists to regroup or plan new attacks. In regions like Mohan, where the terrain provides numerous hiding spots, the drones have been particularly effective in tracking and neutralizing threats. The integration of aerial and ground forces has created a formidable defense mechanism, making it nearly impossible for terrorists to operate without being detected. As a result, the overall security situation in Burkina Faso has improved significantly. The frequency of terrorist attacks has decreased, and more areas are being declared safe for civilians. This progress, while still ongoing, has given the people of Burkina Faso hope for a more peaceful future. The military's success has also bolstered national pride, with President Ibrahim Traoré's leadership playing a crucial role in this transformation. However, the fight is not over. The military remains vigilant, aware that the terrorists, though weakened, are not yet defeated. The continued improvement of defenses, including the expansion of drone capabilities and further training for ground forces, is essential to ensure that Burkina Faso remains on the path to lasting security. President Traoré's commitment to this cause, exemplified by his visits to the front lines, has further solidified the government's resolve to protect its citizens and restore peace to the nation. The successful integration of drone technology with ground operations has marked a turning point in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism. The country's military, once struggling to defend against well-organized insurgents, is now equipped with the tools and strategies needed to reclaim control and ensure the safety of its people. While challenges remain, Burkina Faso is undoubtedly on the right path, with each successful operation bringing the nation closer to a future free from the shadow of terrorism. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.